good day everyone thanks again for joining i am antor your host for the day we will be starting the webinar now for today's webinar we have two talented engineers with us mehdi and tasdeed both of them have been involved with the kubernetes project since 2021 so without further ado let's jump into the webinar and if you have any question during the webinar feel free to ask them in the zoom chat we will be answering them in the qa part of the webinar mehdi please take the line net thank you uh, hello everyone thanks for joining uh, i'm mehdi hasan working as a software engineer at fscode uh, today we have tasdeed with me who is, who is also working as a software engineer at fscode today we'll be discussing about mysql read replica and multi tenancy support by kubedb so let's dive in so we'll be discussing about mysql read replica so we'll be configuring our source instance and create read replica and in later we will create uh, secure our read replica using tls for this we will use uh, our uh, reconfigure of request and uh, reconfigure tls of request uh, that is a enterprise uh, feature by kubedb and later later in the demo we will show you the multi tenancy support using schema manager so what is the read replica read replica uh, read replica is a copy of your primary database server that reflects the changes of your primary almost in real time uh, you can use read replica uh, for offload your read, read request or uh, do your analytics or for other purpose that match your need uh, what kubedb is offering regarding this uh, you can create a read replica from a group replication group replicated instance or a standalone instance uh, we are planning to add support for non kubedb managed instance and uh, you will you will kubedb will allow you to create read replica in the same namespace or in cross namespace so before the demo let's prepare our work environment uh, here uh, here here are things that you can find uh, everything regarding to kubedb uh, you can visit the uh, fscode license server uh, you can visit our well documented kubedb site uh, in this webinar we have uh, used stash and cube vault for the multi tenancy support and in the in our uh, in our youtube channel you can find our webinars and demos so and for the installation purpose uh, uh, you will just need to uh, run this sim simple help command uh, since uh, we are uh, since the feature we are showing you today will be in the next release so you will be able to test this when the kubedb next release has come so for If you if you are familiar with kubedb then you already know that we manage a custom resource definition to provide you the easiest way to provision a, a database in kubernetes uh, since we are managing this custom resource uh, uh, we are we are mentioning the kind as mysql and in the metadata section we are naming the instance the for our case this is named mysql and it's in the demo namespace in the version we are we are using the mysql 8.0.27 and in the replica section we are uh, we are telling we'll be using a we will be using three replicas for this and in the topology we are defining the mode as group replication so it will be a group replicated server and to allow read replica uh, we we have introduced uh, we have introduced double opt in Uh, this is done uh, this is done uh, we will be we will discuss about the double opt-in part later uh, this is done by introducing the field uh, allowed 
read replicas. Uh, in this section, we are uh, we are specifying the namespace. We are uh, will be allowing the read replica and the selector. Uh, the selector will be uh, select the instance uh, from this level. And in the explorer section, uh, we are we are telling we are we are taking a durable storage and we are defining the storage class standard. And we have request. Uh, we have request storage of 10 GB and we have the termination policy is web out. So if you delete the UBS, uh, you, if you delete the CRD, the instance will be deleted from this. And for creating read replicas, what you have, oh, uh, let's, uh, let's create our instance first. So this is my work environment. I have KubeDB enterprise and community operator installed in it. So let's apply our group, group replicate server. So it will create three instance of my, three MySQL instance, which will be group, group replicated. Uh, now it's in the provisioning state. It will be shown in the ready state. So, uh, when it's getting ready, uh, let's let's see the uh, let's see how we can create read replica. So for creating read replica, we are managing the MySQL CRD again. Uh, in this metadata section, we are naming it as MySQL read. It will be in the demo namespace, and we are adding a label uh, here that is the qdb.com instance name will be read replica. And this level will be used to um, verify the double opt-in part. Uh, we'll see that into later. And in the topology section, we are we are we are telling it to the mode will be read replica. That means the instance will be a read replica. And for in its stake, we are referring to the source. The my uh, the name will be my my SQL, The previous source we have deployed and this will be the uh, this will be in the demo namespace and we are telling it is uh, it will have only one replica and the storage section is same as the uh, same as the source server so let's see that so uh let's wait a bit for the mystical server to be ready so we can see that our group replicated server is in ready so Let's apply our read replica. So we can see that we have applied the same YAML. So while it's being provisioning, let's insert some data on it. So we are exactly executing into the MySQL source instance. So we can see the default databases commas are there. So let's create a new database. Uh, let's create a table for that and insert some data into it. So we have inserted four data. Let's validate that. So we have inserted four data. So we can see that my, our read replica is ready. Let's, let's check that.
So we can see that our database has been replicated to our read replica. So let's validate the data. Let's see some real time action. Uh, we want to insert more data in it. So we have added four more, four more data. Yes. So we can see that it's been replicated. So so why we use double opt in there? So uh, we we wanted to make sure that user really wanted to do the, do it and uh, the prevent uh, unnecessary access uh, to the to this re replica and how we have achieved this uh, if you look at the eml clearly uh, uh, we are selecting uh, namespace from the selector uh, we are we are selecting the namespace where it it matches the level read replica and we are selecting the instance that matches the uh, that matches the level Q instance name is read replica if you look at the image uh, if you have uh, one or more read replica and uh, you can see that uh, your my uh, mysql instance will allow allow those read uh, those who have the level levels in it so let's verify our levels So if we see our demo namespace level, we can see that we had a, added a level name read replica in it. And if we uh, from the from the read replica instance, we had a level instance name read replica on it. So this instance is allowed to read from the source server. So this was the use case of this double opt-in. So now we will be, uh, we want to secure our MySQL source ins instance and the replication using TLS. So for that, what we will need is to do a OPS request. This is a KubeDB enterprise feature. And for this, we are ma managing a custom resource, uh, it's kind is MySQL of request. In the metadata section, we are naming naming it and it will be the in the demo namespace. And in the X, uh, spec, we are telling that it will be a re reconfigured tile, uh, TLS type of uh, of request. Uh, you can, uh, for our case, we are adding TLS. Uh, you can add, remove or update uh, using this reconfigured TLS. So in the database reference, we are we will be referring to the MySQL instance, and in the TLS section, we will be we will be referring to the issuer, and in the certificate that that will provide the things related to your client certificate. So let's see this in action. So for that. For that, we will will apply this TLS. So it will it will refer to this source database. So let's apply this. So, and for the issuer, I have uh, already created this issuer. So you can you can see this. So I have this issuer. And if you want to see the YAML, uh, I have I have referred to my CS secret to it. So what that will do? Uh, uh, let's see how KubeDB manage this of request. So when user create a of of request, QDB enterprise operator watches the of request and then it points to the refer 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 database and then uh, it will pause it uh, uh, it will 
pause it and then it will update the stateful set and it will then update with the it will update with the tls and then it will then it will resume and the restart the server so so what what will we do what we are doing here is we will be restarting the bicycle instance one by one and then they will be joined into the group again so let's wait a bit for that So now we can see that since our since our group replicated server has over with TLS, it will be soon into the ready set. And since we don't have the TLS in our MySQL read server, uh, read replica, then it, it, now it has it doesn't have the access to the group replicated server. So let's wait wait a bit for the MySQL server, the source server to be ready. So now we can see our source server is ready. So now what we have to do is the restart this server. Uh, we are planning to add this into this reconfigure TLS of request. So, I'm just restarting this manually. Uh, what we will be, we are planning to do is that when we will, will perform a re reconfigure TLS of request, then we will be restarting this server with it. Uh, the, all the replica associated to this source instance so that will automatically be in the ready state. So let's wait for the server to be terminated and restart again. And I have mentioned to you that we can allow re read replica into other namespaces. So we can so we can see that our read replica is also in the ready state and we have successfully reconfigured our TLS. Now we can take this. Our data has been successfully persisted and and if we see the status, uh, we can see that it's using SSL for its connection. And uh, since I have mentioned to you that uh, we can create database into uh, in in cross name spaces so let's create one in cross, cross name space so what i'm doing is to uh, do this 
give the name space. So, So I can see that I have another MySQL read instance in the test namespace that's also in the ready state. So let's validate that. So we can see that our data has been successfully re replicated. We can also validate that. So this is from my side. So Tazi, can you please share your screen? Um, yes, uh, am I visible? Uh, is my screen visible? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you, Mehdi. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Tashdid, software engineer at AppsCode. Uh, with a bunch of other developers, I have developed schema manager to support multi-tenancy in KubeDB MySQL. So in this webinar, I'm going to demonstrate some of our features of schema manager. More specifically, we'll show you uh, creating database, managing user, initializing database, and also cleanup, uh, all using the schema manager. Uh, <clears throat> so introducing you to schema manager, uh, I, I, you may have all, already got that the schema manager is just a tool which actually manages multi-tenancy inside KubeDB. Uh, let's talk about multi-tenancy a bit. So, Multi-tenancy is a reference to the mode of operation of software where multiple independent instances of one or multiple applications operate in a shared environment. Um, the instances are logically isolated, but <clears throat> physically they are actually integrated. Uh, let's say I need to design a database which will uh, host data for multiple developers. Now for security and admin purpose, I need to make sure that the data of different developer is properly isolated, but I also do not want to start 10 MySQL processes for hosting the data for 10 developers on 10 different servers. Uh, so what I would do is use multi-tenancy in my MySQL server. And to do that in a Kubernetes native way, we have our schema manager in hand. Uh, schema manager uses Kube Vault, uh, which is a product from Apps Code for user management and implements the multi-tenancy inside KubeDB. Um, one thing to mention here is uh, there are a few categories of multi-tenancy and the schema manager is currently in the shared database one schema per tenant mode. Uh, we can see that in the diagram already. Uh, <clears throat> so let's begin with our demo. Uh, before that, uh, I have to mention that in my cluster, in the environment, I, uh, the KubeDB, KubeVault and Stash operator is already running. Uh, if you uh, want uh, these in your cluster, you may refer to the fifth slide of our webinar. Uh, <clears throat> there, all the links are given there. Uh, and also in my cluster, I have already, uh, I already have one KubeDB MySQL instance, one Kube Vault Vault server instance. As I've already mentioned that I will use Vault server uh, under the hood of Schema Manager. And I have also prepared some namespaces earlier. Uh, uh, actually, these namespaces are uh, like, we'll only allow schemas from these namespaces, which are labeled uh, uh, with this app schema manager. 
and this thing I have mentioned in my uh, QDB MySQL spec. Uh, you can see this here. Uh, as Mehdi showed you the double opt-in for read replica. Uh, here, uh, this double opt-in is also used for schema manager uh, in this in this section allowed schemas, and I am uh, mentioning the namespace selectors. <clears throat> so I can uh, see that uh, in my terminal that. MySQL server is running and the vault server is running in my cluster. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, so moving on. Now, uh, this is my first schema manager. Uh, uh, to begin with, uh, I would uh, go through the YAML to make you understand about the structure of our schema manager uh, custom resource definition. So as for the kind, uh, as you are using here uh, MySQL schema manager, so the kind would be MySQL database. Uh, uh, and for the metadata, I have chosen just the name and namespace. Uh, this name is schema manager and namespace is demo X. As I've showed you earlier that uh, we would only use demo X, demo Y and demo Z namespace uh, for our schema manager in this demo. And later on in the spec section, first of all, we have a database section. In this database section, we have two different uh, separate sections called server reference and configuration. So as for the server reference, this refers, this section refers to the kubedb MySQL instance, uh, which is running on my cluster and uh, I do everything in that MySQL server. And as for the configuration part, this is the configuration of my target uh, database. Like I want a database, uh, that uh, uh, the name should be demo user, the character set would be UTF-8, encryption disabled and read-only zero, that this is not in read-only mode. Um, these three parts are optional, the character set encryption and read-only, <clears throat> but uh, the name is obviously, have to put it in and uh, okay. And you can also alter your database using your YAML. Like if you change the UTF-8 to big five, then schema manager will alter your database in the kubedb. So moving on, <laughs> there's a vault ref. Uh, so the vault ref is uh, referring to the vault server, which is running in my cluster, uh, which I would use for the user management, as I've told you earlier. And the access policy, in the access policy, I've mentioned some subjects that I would only give uh, permission to my credentials to uh, regarding this database to only to these subjects and also a default TTL, which means that uh, for how long the credential would be valid. Uh, okay, we'd we'll see that uh, later in the demonstration how the default TTL works. And as for the deletion policy, I have set this to delete. You can also set this to do not delete for preventing accidental deletion. So, Let's now apply our first schema. Oh, uh, so for my terminal setup, uh, let me uh, make you uh, a, a short uh, description. This is my environment where I can see my MySQL server and vault server. This is the schema manager part. We'll watch it here. These two are for user. And in this terminal, I am logged in as uh, admin, uh, database admin. Let me show you the databases current situation. Okay, so we have uh, these basic uh, databases. The QDB system is from schema manager. Uh, uh, we'll talk about it later. And this one is for applying the YAML. So, okay, let's apply our first YAML. Okay, so we can see that uh, the schema manager is already, uh, already successfully applied into our cluster. So let's see from the admin user first. So we can see that demo user database has been created, which was, uh, uh, which was declared in that YAML. Uh, now, uh, as you know, uh, there would be some credentials using which you can log into your database and do your operations. So let's get that. Can you get MySQL data, database? Manager. Okay, so uh, in this JSON path, we we'll get the secret name. Uh, okay, let me copy. KCB secret demo X. Okay, we have our first credential. 
so in this section i ha i am exact in this mysql server so uh, let's try to log in using these credentials okay so the login is successful so let me show you something uh, okay so now uh, in this uh, separation mode or multi tenant mode i can only see the demo user and information schema uh, for, uh, for with using these credentials and for the admin uh, admin perspective i have already showed you so let's use this and uh, do some operations create a table uh, create table like uh, something random which has a name uh, worker 20 okay insert into uh, random value uh, okay uh, so we saw that uh, we can do the operation random okay so our data is here uh, now we can see that our schema manager's age is 2 minutes and 36 seconds uh, as we have showed you that after 5 minutes the credential should be invalid so we have to wait for another 2 minutes and 30 seconds uh, in between i can show you uh, altering database so uh, let's alter our database okay see uh, sorry you know schema manager yaml <clears throat> let's change our uh, let's change it here let's change it to big big five big five sorry okay before that uh, let me show you uh, the initial uh, database okay show create show create demo user Okay, so here you can see that character set is UTF-8 and now we're going to change this, uh, apply this scheme again and we can see that the scheme is configured. So now, yes, so we can see that the database has been altered uh, using the descriptive YAML. Uh, so we have uh, one more minute to go. Uh, in between, uh, I have something to tell you. Uh, that there are some common security concern uh, when implementing a multi-tenancy, uh, like uh, credential leaks or security breach. So to tackle that, we have incorporated Cube Vault. Uh, Q, we only for this we have incorporated Cube Vault. That is a actually a tool to manage HashiCorp Vault in Kubernetes uh, from Apps Code. Um, and Cube Vault tightens the security by implementing some features like. Uh, dynamic credential for your database, uh, identity-based access management, secret monitoring, auditing, uh, data encryption and tokenization, and also database credential rotation, and etc. So Cube Vault helps you reduce the blast radius in case of any leaks or a security breach. Uh, you may refer to the Cube Vault talk uh, to learn more about it, uh, and the link is given in the fifth slide. So yes. Okay, let's wait for five more minutes, uh, five more seconds. And after that, the uh, credentials should be expired. Mm, yes, so the database schema manager is expired. So uh, you may be curious right now that what happens when the database is expired. So let's see. Now we have a session where we are, we are logged in using these credentials. Now let's try to do some operations. So we can see that this connection has been lost. That means our session has been cut off. Okay, so let's try to log in using those credentials again. And as we can see that those credentials are no longer valid. That means the expire with the expiration of the schema, only the credentials got invalid. But what about the database? <laughs> if we see the database, the database is still there. Demo user is still there. So you clearly understand what happens when the schema is expired. 
so i think we should move to our next feature uh, <clears throat> and which is initializing your database so as for initializing your database uh, let's see let's suppose you have a sql script with you that you want uh, your database to be initialized with that SQL dot SQL script uh, inside the kubedb MySQL instance, and you want to do that using Schema Manager, and Schema Manager allows you to do that. In this YAML, I, I, I can see that you can see that what you have to do uh, to if you want to initialize your uh, database with its script. So you just take a normal Kubernetes uh, volume source and mount that uh, mount your SQL script inside that and refer this refer this uh, volume source to your schema and the schema manager will initialize the script initialize the database for you so let's go through the YAML this is all the same just a bit different uh, in here the schema name is schema script from demo Y namespace the MySQL server instance are same. The database name is changed, demo script. Previous one was demo user. The vault reference is same. The subject has been changed. And here you can see that how to uh, tell a schema that I want to initialize using script. That in this spec.init part, you just mention script config map and the config map name or anything secret name. You can mention this like it. So now let's apply. So first of all, let me apply my config map. <coughs> okay. Okay, so you can see that this is in progressing state and now this is successful. So let's grab the uh, secret again mm, before that, okay. So we we want this time it is from schema script and demo y. So we got the secret name. You secret and demo y. Okay, so we got the credentials. Let's try to log in. Okay, successful login, show databases. Okay, so we have demo script, use demo script, uh, show tables. We can see that uh, the product table is initialized using the script. And now let's see what's inside. And product okay so we can see that the script initializing was uh, very much successful so let's see this from the admin perspective or admin point of view so we can see that the demo user is still there demo script uh, is uh, there okay so let's uh, move on what is next the next thing is we can initialize our database using snapshot uh, snapshot is uh, we refer to snapshot uh, or more specifically uh, a snapshot that has been taken with stash so if you don't know about stash um, stash is a, a tool in kubernetes which uh, which allows you to take your uh, database backup into cloud and restore them anywhere anytime whenever you want and that is also from apps code and if you want to know more about stash, you can refer to his talk. Uh, but in short, uh, I just say that I have a, a, a snapshot taken from another database into my cloud and the repository uh, in stash, uh, we, we refer to that uh, using this repository kind. So I have a repository kind with me and that repository secret with me this has been uh, already applied in the uh, yeah, already applied in this cluster. And uh, now we will uh, restore our data using this repository. And to restore that, uh, we just need to mention uh, in the schema YAML uh, like this, that init snapshot repository and repository reference. 
So if I just uh, put it down here, the schema manager will uh, restore all everything for me. So let's demonstrate. First of all, let me apply the repository. Uh, repository. Yeah. And now I'm going to apply the schema. Schema restore. Okay, so here you can see that this is in progressing mode. This is from demo Z namespace, and the database name is demo restore. Um, uh, it might take some moments to complete. So let's wait for a minute. Okay, so now this is successful. And <laughs> if we see it from this, uh, from the admin perspective, we can see that the demo restore is there. Uh, uh demo restore is there okay so now uh, <coughs> this gap the secret demo said okay okay so the first of all log out from this W. Yeah. Okay, so we can see that we have been successfully logged in. So show databases use demo store show tables. So yes, so I took uh, this table backup uh, I, before the webinar. The table's name is Kings. So let's see uh, if it has uh, successfully restored. So select all from Kings. So yeah, you can see that there are data inside it and this uh, has all been uh, successfully restored using this schema manager and using stash. So if you don't have uh, if you don't have anything to restore using stash you don't need stash operator in your cluster so <clears throat> okay uh, this is it uh, this is it from schema manager uh, but uh, before i leave i want to show you one thing that what happens uh, when you clean up your schema manager yamls so right now i am logged in as the uh, for the schema restore user so let me delete this uh delete uh, schema restore yaml okay so i've deleted this so uh they no longer uh, states that demo restore so the database is actually deleted and as for the connection uh the connection is also cut off and uh <clears throat> if you try to uh if you try to uh, uh if you try to uh, re-enter using the same credentials uh, you won't be able to do that so as soon as the schema manager is deleted all the credentials all the users and all the tense information are gone to completely gone from the kubedb mysql instance so uh, yes uh, this was it from uh, mysql schema manager and uh, one thing uh, that is uh, important to mention i guess that uh, if you already have an schema in your cluster uh, with some name like uh, demo and you are trying to uh, apply another schema uh, same with same name demo then the second schema would be uh, failed from this schema manager operator uh, <coughs> this is uh, some issue with our uh, <clears throat> Uh, for uh, user management and also just we don't uh, let user create uh, some new tents which is already in this cluster so this is it from mysql schema manager thank you everyone for being with me throughout the whole demonstration uh, now we'll go to the next event and i would uh, request media Sun to take the like Uh, thanks, Patrick.
uh, now we will be discussing our upcoming feature so for our upcoming feature we are planning to add mysql semi synchronous replication in this way you can uh, you will be able to you will be able to add one or more replicated server uh, uh, there is a common there is a common request of adding this that was uh, people want to use two uh, two or more server to to re replicate their cluster one is as a primary and one is just uh, just just with a normal backup so we we'll, we are planning to add this semi synchronous replication after that uh, uh, we'll love to uh, hear if you have more question we'll love to hear from you and uh, if you had any feedback through our upcoming features, uh, through our upcoming releases uh, regarding to the MySQL read replica and the multi tenancy support, uh, we'll love to hear from you. So, Kamal, if you can take over from now. Or if you guys have any question, uh, you can unmute and ask. Uh, if you guys have any question, you can feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, as there is no question, with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation today. The next webinar will be announced soon. We hope to see you again. Have a nice day.